if your child were lost in a crowd, I'm, I'm a parent, you know, like I would do everything in my power immediately to find that child. Nothing would get in the way of it. And so that would, that's like, you know, an extreme. Mm -hmm. But a lot of things that, that people say they want, they'll give up on it. And that means they don't want it as much as I would want to find my child who's lost in the crowd. There is something that is that each of us is meant to do. And it may not be something that you can identify as a mission. It may not be something really dramatic like finding a lost child. But in a way, we're all contributing to the finding of a lost child, which is ourselves. This this human civilization that is lost in separation. All of us have a role to play in reunion, in coming back home. And it could be something really dramatic, like working for a political campaign, you know, or, you know, making a film or a book that reaches millions or something dramatic like that. But that's not the only thing that needs to be done. Most of what needs to be done to, to fulfill reunion is very humble. It's invisible. No one will ever celebrate it. You might not ever get thanked, but you know, I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of the single moms. I'm thinking of the, the, the daycare workers, thinking of the home health workers, the people who go into these jobs and maybe they're getting $15 an hour and they're not getting paid to love the children but they do anyway. They bring something extra to it. Those contributions on a 500 year time scale, on a thousand year time scale, you know, that kid grows up having received just a little bit more love and passing on therefore a little less pain. Because this journey, this, this return journey home, it's not something that happens through a moment of enlightenment and then we're living in utopia. There's a lot of territory between here and there, just like you were saying on the personal level, on the, on the collective level, there's a lot of territory that we have to, to, that we're choosing when we choose to return home to the more beautiful world our hearts know is possible. And it's going to take many, many generations. I mean, the level right now of trauma and, and disease and, and spiritual sickness is just enormous. You know, the degradation that people are living in, the legacy of violence, the uh, epigenetic trauma, like it's not, you know, it's not like you, you know, sit in an ayahuasca ceremony and you're healed. That's part of a healing process. I'm not dismissing that at all. Um, in fact, I think it's essential for the healing of not for every person, but for our species. But, but, you know, it's, I mean, it, you know, those of you who have had that experience, for a few days, it might seem that all your problems have been solved, but no, um, the medicine then works on a deeper level. Uh, it works you and it might intensify the things that had been kind of under wraps that had been in an emotional cyst. And now the cyst has been punctured and they're coming out and you've got to deal with them. And this is true on the, on, on the species level as well. Uh, and and the lifetime of our species is far greater than an individual. So the healing process could take thousands of years. And so these invisible contributions are active on that time scale. They may not win you fame and fortune and recognition, but but they're active on that time scale and they are equally important. A thousand years from now, our descendants, are going to be giving thanks to their ancestors. Even if the healing journey is not done in a thousand years, the world is gonna be a lot better than it is now, even in 50 years. In some ways it'll be worse, but we'll be able to say we're on the return path. In a thousand years, our descendants will be thanking us and they won't just be thanking the big visible people. They'll be thanking especially the ones who did the humble work. 